In this white hot furnace, steel billets are placed to bring them to the correct forging temperature. As each piece is ready, it's taken out to the hammer where it's shaped in dies to the correct form. This shows the drop stamp being used for hammering the white hot metal to the required shape. Several blows are necessary so that the structure of the metal is gradually changed to its new forged state. Afterwards, the forgings are reheated and again placed in the drop hammer dies for a final blow, which trues up the shape. The small amount of surplus metal is taken off in a machine having cutting dies and is called phrasing. Here's a finished forging. These bars of steel are being heated in a furnace prior to being forged in an upsetting machine. This machine applies blows onto the end and sides of the metal and forces the material to shape by a series of sharp blows whilst the bar is being held. The strong jaws hold dies for correct shaping. After forging, the shaped end is cut off in a cold saw, the bar reheated and the process repeated. In this case, a railway wagon brake lever is being brought to the correct temperature. When ready, the hammer, which is being operated by a girl, administers shattering blows to the bar until the correct shape is obtained by using various dies and blocks, whilst the blacksmith twists and turns the material by deft manipulation of his wrists. This highly skilled work is a craftsman's art, only achieved by years of hard work and patience. Plate folding presses are used for bending and flanging plates. This huge machine will take plates up to 16 feet wide, but here are three smaller plates being bent during one stroke of the blade. The plate nearest to you is turning up one edge, the next is being folded and so on, until all four sides of each plate are folded or wrapped to make sliding joints as used in the manufacture of pit tubs or trams and other articles. The plates are pushed up to predetermined stops on the table so that all plates are pressed alike and are therefore interchangeable. Men handle the plates with the greatest of ease and a stack is shown ready for the next operation. Strong underframes and buffers are necessary to take the shocks of rough handling in the pit. The tram underframes and buffers are electrically welded here uh, girls do this intricate work exceptionally well. Here are the multiple drilling machines used for drilling holes inside and end plates. All holes are in the same position in each tub 
to ensure interchangeability. The complete assembly of one of these tubs is a matter of a few minutes. The sides and ends slide into each other by the use of the folded corner. A few bolts are put in, then the buffers are attached. And lastly, the bearings, wheels and axles. The tubs are then wheeled away, ready for use, and for bringing up from the pits are much needed coal. This woodworking shop has several machines for preparing timber for making and carrying railway wagons, etc. Drilling, planing and mortising operations are necessary to shape these large pieces of timber to the correct dimensions. Badly damaged railway wagons are sent into the works for repairs. They are examined by experts, the damage is assessed, and afterwards all the necessary new parts are collected. After this, the wagon repairer takes out all the damaged pieces and replaces them with new material until he's satisfied that the finished article is as good as new. Here are some wagons which have been repaired and painted, ready for transporting Britain's war goods to the numerous theatres of operation. An assembly shop for turning out small units is shown here. The parts are brought in from the various machine shops, put together and welded into working units, and tested for the high accuracy called for in this class of machinery. Most of the work is carried out by girls, with a nucleus of male supervision. Engineering works should be equipped with medical facilities such as at these works. Qualified doctors and nurses are in constant attention day and night, and all employees have the assurance that by reporting immediately to the medical attendant any accident which may occur, no matter how small, they will be better equipped to turn out arms and material for our fighting forces who are battling this raging war now upon us, and be healthy and strong citizens that Britain and her allies expect all their people to be.